guys, it's Alyssa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I put together four recipes of delicious fall treats for you. This time of year is my favorite time of year. We're in October, we're gonna be heading into November, all the delicious fall treats that come about. I love this time of year, but I have to mention, all four of these recipes don't include pumpkin. I know some people get burnout on pumpkin this time of year and I completely understand, so I made sure to include two separate recipes that don't include pumpkin. The first recipe I have to share with you is one of my family's favorites and it's maple oatmeal cream sandwich cookies. These cookies are so good. They have a perfect chew to them and a maple buttercream in the center. They're delicious. They remind me of those little Debbie oatmeal sandwich cookies you can get from the grocery store, but 10 times better because you know all of the ingredients going into it and it's homemade. What's better than that? The next recipe I have to share with you is one of my favorites. I love this in the morning with a cup of coffee and it's pumpkin scones. These are so good. They come together quickly. They don't require any chill time in the fridge and they are delicious. And then the next recipe I have to share with you is an apple cider donut loaf cake. There's a cinnamon sugar coating on the outside of this. It's moist and delicious. It reminds me of those donuts you can find this time of year where it has the cinnamon sugar and they're so good melt in your mouth type of donuts, but it's in a loaf cake form and it is so good and delicious. And the last recipe I have to share with you is one of my husband's favorites and it's snickerdoodle pumpkin cookies. These are chewy and delicious with a little bit of a crust on the outside of them and so good they would freeze really well. So with all that said, let's go get started on the video. The first recipe I have to share with you are these delicious maple oatmeal sandwich cookie. They're perfect for fall. So here's everything you're gonna need for this recipe. You're gonna need some flour, you're gonna need some cinnamon, two sticks of butter, some maple syrup, vanilla, two eggs, brown sugar, um, oatmeal or oats, uh, salt and then baking soda and then for the cream you're gonna need some milk two sticks of butter powdered sugar and then you're also gonna need maple extract which I didn't have so I'm going with maple syrup and then also salt so the first thing I'm doing is just getting one cup of butter which is two sticks of butter and this is at room temperature into my mixer I'm also adding in one and a half cups of brown sugar and half a cup of maple syrup and one teaspoon of vanilla and I'm getting it all mixed up and in between I am scraping the sides of my bowl so everything incorporates really well and then I'm also adding in two eggs one at a time and mixing in between so now that I got my wet ingredients mixed up really well, it's time to add in my dry ingredients. So I am gonna be adding in um, one and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, and then I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and I'm gonna get that all mixed up. I also stop it as it's mixing to scrape the sides, just like I did when I was mixing the wet ingredients to make sure everything's incorporated really well. So the last ingredient I need to get added into this mixture is three and a half cups of old fashioned oats. So I get that all added in, I get my mixture turned on and I give it all a good mix and then I do turn it off and I turn it back on after I scrape the sides just to make sure it's all incorporated really well. And then once it's all done, I just get this all formed into a ball. I cover it with some plastic wrap and I get this into my fridge. So this can sit in your fridge overnight, but if you're impatient like me and you want to get this going, you can let it sit in your fridge, but at least for two hours if you don't want to do overnight. So while it was sitting in my fridge, I decided to get my icing ready. And so I'm just adding in one cup. So again, two sticks of butter that is also at room temperature into a bowl. And then I'm going to add in four cups of powdered sugar. And you're supposed to do one teaspoon of maple extract, like I said earlier, but I don't have that. So I decided to just add in a little bit of maple syrup and then a dash of salt and then you have to add about four tablespoons or so of milk I always start with maybe two or three and then I slowly add in the rest as I'm incorporating everything to get it to the right texture that I want So as I'm mixing this, as you can see, I'm adding in my third tablespoon of milk, and then I'm also gonna add in my fourth tablespoon of milk. So according to the recipe, it took the exact amount it said, which was four tablespoons. Um, so I always go with the motto that start with the smaller amount when you're mixing something like this, because it's always easier to add more in versus take something out if you mess up. So start with the smaller amount when you're making something like icing, just to make sure you get the right consistency that you need, and then you can always add more in if needed. 
So I just lined two baking sheets with some parchment paper and then I'm using a cookie scoop and you're going to need about two tablespoons of dough to form your cookie balls. Um, so I'm doing about one scoop and a half to form the balls that I need and you want to try and get them very similar in size so they can form the perfect looking oatmeal cookie sandwiches. So I get these into my preheated oven of 350 degrees and they're going to bake for about 14 to 16 minutes. I started at 14 and then I kind of watched them from there it took about 15 minutes or so in my oven and so I'm going to pull them out and they're going to cool completely I'm going to get them on a rack to let them cool a little bit more before I put the icing in it because you definitely want these cooled off before you put the icing in or it's going to completely melt your icing so once the cookies were completely cooled, I just lined them up on some parchment paper and then I just decided to go with the cookie scoop for the buttercream because it gave the perfect amount of buttercream into the center of each of these sandwich cookies. So I just put um, the buttercream in, in the center and then I pushed down with another cookie on top and then formed the perfect little oatmeal sandwich cookie. These maple oatmeal sandwich cookies are so good. They have the perfect chew to them with a little bit of a crisp. They have the maple flavor, so you get a little bit of a taste of fall, and they are delicious. The next recipe I have to share with you is one of my favorites and it's easy pumpkin scones. These are soft, so delicious, and it require no chill time in the fridge for the dough. Here's everything you're going to need for this recipe. You're gonna need some pumpkin puree. You're gonna also need some heavy whipping cream, some vanilla. You're also gonna need some butter and then some brown sugar, one egg, some flour, some baking powder, some salt. And then for your spices, you're gonna need some pumpkin spice and you're also gonna need some cinnamon. And then for the icings on top, you're gonna to be doing two different types of icings. For the first one, you're gonna need powdered sugar and heavy cream. And then you're also gonna need pumpkin spice, um, pumpkin puree, powdered sugar and heavy cream for the second icing. So next I just got a medium size mixing bowl and I added in half a cup of pumpkin puree. I also added in one egg and then four tablespoons of heavy cream. And then I also added in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then I just mixed it all up really well until it was well incorporated. So once I was done mixing up my wet ingredients, I just moved that off to the side and then I got a large mixing bowl and it was time to add my dry ingredients. So I just added two cups of flour, a third cup of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And then I just mixed it all up Next, I just moved on to get my butter cubed up. So I'm just doing um, half a cup of cold butter. You want to make sure this is extra cold, which a half a cup is just one stick. And I'm just cubing this all up into medium, small size cubes. And I get that added into the dry mixture. So you're going to want to crumble this into the dry mixture. I'm going to use a pastry cutter. If you don't have that, you can use a fork and you can also use your hands if you don't have anything else. You just want to make sure that that you get the um, butter into the flour mixture and form pea size crumbs. So once I got that butter crumbled up into the dry mixture pretty well, then I just formed a well, so kind of just like a hole in the center of the dry ingredients, and then I poured my wet ingredients right into that, and then I started to mix this all up. As it started to form a dough like you see here, I then moved on and I got this onto my countertop. I just lightly floured my countertop surface, and I dumped the dough right onto it and I just formed it into a ball and kind of kneaded it a little bit. So as you're kneading this, you're just doing it a few times. You want to make sure that you don't over knead it and then you're going to form it into a circle. You want it about one inch thickness and then I'm just cutting it into eight equal wedges. So my knife kept sticking to the dough because the dough was definitely very sticky in the center as I was cutting it. So I kind of was covering my knife with flour. I found that that helped it glide through the dough a bit more easily than without it. Um, I didn't want to put flour right on top of the scones and do it that way because I didn't want my scones to turn white so that's why I did it with my knife and it worked out really well so once I was done with that and I got it all cut up into eight equal wedges I got it onto my cookie sheet that I had covered with parchment paper I then got my scones into my oven and I set my timer to bake for 15 minutes 
So while my scones were in the oven, I went ahead and made my icing. So there's two different types of icings for these scones. I'm going to make the white icing glaze first, and I'm starting with one cup of powdered sugar, and I'm adding in about two to three tablespoons of heavy cream. And again, just like I did with the oatmeal sandwich cookies, I started with a small amount of milk and I added milk slowly into it until I got the consistency that I wanted for my icing. The next icing I needed to get ready was the pumpkin glaze frosting that I would be drizzling on top of the scones. So I just put in my bowl about three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of pumpkin puree, one and a half tablespoons of heavy cream, half a tablespoon of vanilla, and then about two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I mixed it all up really well and then I just was making sure I got it to the right consistency I wanted because I wanted this one a little bit more runny since I was drizzling it on top. So once my scones were golden brown on top, they were ready to go. So these did take about 15 minutes for me to bake to get the right color that I wanted. I would check them though at the 13 to 14 minute mark, um, especially if your oven runs hot, you just wanna make sure they have that nice golden color on top and then they're ready to go. So I pulled these out of the oven and I put them on the counter and let them cool for about five minutes on the cookie sheet. And then once they were cooled off enough, I just moved them over to the cooling rack and I let them cool completely there. And so once they were done cooling, I then dipped them into my white icing glaze like I'm doing here in the bowl one at a time. Once I got the scones all dipped into the white glaze, then I moved on and it was time to do the pumpkin spice glaze. So I just took one of my drinking glasses, I got a sandwich Ziploc bag into it and I poured that pumpkin glaze right into it. And then I cut a little um, piece off of the corner to do a nice little glaze right on top with the pumpkin glaze and they came out so cute. These pumpkin scones came together so quickly. They're so easy to make. And like I said earlier, they don't require any chill time in your refrigerator. So you can put these together pretty quickly. They are soft and tender and so good, have a slight chew to them and they're not overly sweet and they would pair perfectly with your coffee in the morning. The next recipe I have to share with you is this delicious apple cider donut loaf cake. So here's everything you're gonna need for this recipe. You're gonna need flour, you're gonna need two eggs, sour cream, you're gonna need some cider. I got the spiced cider from Trader Joe's. You're also gonna need nutmeg and cinnamon, vanilla, and then you're gonna need some uh, brown sugar and then butter, some salt, some baking soda, um, some baking powder, and then also some cornstarch. And then for the topping on the loaf cake, you're gonna need one stick of butter and then cinnamon sugar. So the first thing I did was just get my oven started and I got it preheated to 325. Next, I just got a saucepan onto my burner and I poured in one cup of the apple cider. So you're gonna wanna bring this to a boil and you're gonna wanna let it boil until it reduces to about half the amount of apple cider. So about a half a cup once you're all done with it. I got it into another dish to let it cool slightly. And then in that same saucepan, I added in one stick of butter so I could let that melt. So while my butter was melting, I just got a bowl and I got uh, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I also added in the two eggs right into that and then I mixed that all up until it was well incorporated. So once my butter was cooled just enough, it was still slightly hot, I added this into my brown sugar and egg mixture. So while I'm adding it in, I'm making sure to whisk as I slowly add it in and then I just mix it all up. Next, I'm just adding in my dry, dry ingredients. So I'm adding in one and a quarter cup of flour plus two tablespoons right into that mixture. And then I'm adding in two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then I'm adding in one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and then half a teaspoon of cinnamon and about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. So I also just want to point out that the recipe did call for mixing the dry ingredients in a separate bowl and then adding it into the brown sugar and egg mixture, but I'm not a fan of making dirty dishes if I really don't find it necessary. And with some, something like that where you have to mix two separate things in different bowls and then mix them together, I always just mix them all together at once and everything always turns out just fine. So do it whichever way you want. <laughs> 
And then to the cider mixture, I added in a half a cup of sour cream and two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then I mixed that all up. And then I added that into the brown sugar egg mixture with the dry ingredients that I put into this white bowl. And I would add in a little bit of the sour cream apple cider mixture in, I would mix it up and then I would add in a little bit more and then mix it up and so on until I didn't have any more of the apple cider sour cream mixture left. I just made sure I mixed it all together really well until everything was well incorporated. So for this recipe, it says to use a nine by five loaf pan. I'm just using the sandwich loaf pans that I use for my sandwich bread and it worked out perfectly. I sprayed it with some um, olive oil spray to help the parchment paper stick and I lined it with the parchment paper because it helps remove the loaf cake from the pan easily. So I just poured in the batter right into that and then I shook it up really well kind of banging it on my countertop to get the top of the batter smoothed out completely so it would bake up nicely. So I just got this into my oven and I set my oven to bake for about 50 minutes. The recipe says 55 minutes. I decided to go with 50 because I didn't want it to burn on top because I've learned my oven does run hotter. Um, I ended up baking this for about 53 minutes. So once it was all done, I pulled it out and I let it cool completely. And then I removed it from the pan. I got it onto one of my small cookie sheets because this part kind of gets messy. So I just brushed it with some melted butter. I just melted one stick of butter and I brushed it all on this loaf cake all around the sides and the top of it. And then once I was all done with that butter, I then sprinkled a generous amount of this cinnamon sugar. It's gonna give it a donut texture on the outside of this cake. So you definitely wanna make sure you get a good amount. It definitely gets soaked into that mel melted butter. So I just kept sprinkling the cinnamon sugar on top until I could see a nice layer on top of the loaf cake. So here it is sliced up and ready to go. I like this warmed up in the microwave just a little bit. You can top it with some butter. It's chewy and soft and so good. Anybody will love this if you make it for them. And the last recipe I have to share with you are these delicious pumpkin snickerdoodle cookies. They're one of my favorites. So here's everything you're gonna need for these pumpkin snickerdoodles. You're gonna need some melted butter, some salt, some granulated sugar, some brown sugar, some white chocolate chips, baking powder, baking soda, some vanilla extract, and then you're also gonna need some pumpkin puree, and then some flour, and then for your spices, you're gonna need cinnamon, and you're gonna need pumpkin spice. The first thing I'm doing is I'm just getting about seven tablespoons of pumpkin puree. I dump that out onto a paper towel and I'm just squeezing out of as much as the moisture and the liquid from this pumpkin puree. There's a lot of water in it and so I'm just squeezing out as much as I can. And then I just get that set off on the side and then into my mixing bowl, I'm adding in about a quarter cup of uh, brown sugar. I'm also adding in about a half a cup of granulated sugar. I'm adding in a half a stick of melted butter. And then I'm also adding in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And then the seven tablespoons of pumpkin puree that I had squeezed out the liquid from. And then I got that added in, mixed it all up really well until it was well incorporated. Next, I have one and a half cups of flour and I'm just adding in um, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm also adding in two teaspoons of ground cinnamon and one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And then I'm mixing that all up and then I add it into my wet ingredients. So now that I got that all mixed up, I need to add in my white chocolate chips. So I have three quarters of a cup of white chocolate chips here, but I'm saving about a quarter cup of the chocolate chips that I'm gonna use to put on top of the cookies once they come out of the oven. So I just added in my white chocolate chips. I got that covered with some plastic wrap and I'm getting this in my fridge to chill for about 30 minutes, but you can also chill these overnight. You can chill it for even maybe two days or so. Um, and so while that was chilling, I just got my baking sheets lined with some parchment paper. And I also got about half a cup of granulated sugar into a bowl and I added in two teaspoons of cinnamon. And then I just mixed this all up. This is gonna be the coating for the dough. So once the dough was ready to go and chilled in my fridge, I took it out and I just took my cookie scoop and I scooped out the dough, rolled it into a ball and I rolled that into the cinnamon sugar mixture and then I just lined them on my baking sheet. So once I got those all ready to go I just took a measuring cup and I just flattened these down slightly. You want to help 
um, get these to form into a cookie. Uh, they probably wouldn't spread very well if you didn't flatten them down. So I'm just making sure to flatten them all out just slightly. And then I got these into my oven and I set my timer to bake for five minutes. I'm starting with five minutes because I'm going to rotate my pans and move the bottom one to the top and the top one to the bottom halfway through. So I'm setting it for five minutes. They need to bake though for about 10 to 12 minutes. So as you can see here, I'm rotating them around. I'm going to move them around and then I'm going to set my timer again to bake for five minutes. I started with the 10 minutes. I didn't want to over bake these and I added on time if I needed. So mine bake for about 11 minutes. I kept an eye on them at the end because these, you want them chewy. They're gonna seem extremely soft in the center, but they're gonna set up more as they sit out. The edges are gonna be slightly golden brown and that way you're gonna know that they're done um, based on the edges and at, they're gonna be set up around the edges a little bit. So once these were done, I just pulled them out of my oven. I let them cool slightly. And then as they were cooling, I topped them with additional white chocolate chips just to give them a nice little look you don't have to do this if you don't want to I just decided to do it because I wanted them to have a nice little pretty look with additional white chocolate chips on top these cookies are always such a hit every fall when I make them everybody always loves them they're soft and chewy and so delicious all right, everyone, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. And if you're new here, I would love to have you. I make tons of videos all about food and recipes that I really enjoy sharing with everybody. So make sure to subscribe down below and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.